Turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. I'm thankful to your pastor, who's been a friend of mine better than 20 years, for allowing me to do this. It's an honor and a privilege. And after today, I'll be able to say that I have preached in over 200 churches, plus my pastoring, so... Thank you so much, Brother Bill. Uh, wonderful man of God. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass, if it's good in your life, it'll come to pass. If problems are coming to your life, just hang on. It'll come to pass. When the Lord would take Elijah into heaven by whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal, and Elijah said to Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. By the way, it's good to be at Bethel, and right now, Polly and I are in Collinsville at New Bethel. And Elisha says unto him, As the Lord lives, and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went to Bethel. In other words, he said, not on your life. I'm going with you. Would to God that church members would have that attitude today. I'm just going with you, church. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. He didn't get up and say it. He says, I know it. Just be quiet. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth, and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elisha said unto him, that's Elisha, Tarry, I pray thee, here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as... Thy soul liveth, I will not leave you. So they too went on. How can two walk together, the scripture says, unless they agree? And the scripture says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren, our sisters, to dwell together in unity. Folks, if we're together, the devil can't stop us. And fifty of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they stood by Jordan. A lot of folks will get close enough to look and to complain, but not close enough to be in the work. I pray that you're in the work. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they divided hither and thither. So they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they had gone over, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I am taken from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. A lot of people stops right here. When somebody says it's a hard thing, they stop. But listen, nevertheless, if thou see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass that they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. 
And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more. And he took, he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. This is showing distress when they rent their clothes. And he took also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had smitten the waters, they departed hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Now listen, when you do what God says, look what happens. And when the prophets that were, were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. They took notice that the Spirit of God is still around. Now, Brother Bill has gone off to South Georgia where uh, Miss Elise is from, where I spent a good deal of my life. But God's here, amen? amen. So I want you to get on and ride with me just a little bit, little bit on just when I need him. Now, when the situation seems hopeless... And impossible. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just in the place where God can do a work. Amen? If anybody can do it, you don't need God. But if a situation gets desperate, and I've been there. I've been when you couldn't look up to see bottom. But God is always there. Amen? When it seems that God is all that you have... You find out God's all you need. And God may not be on our schedule, but he's always on time. Now, I've walked with him, didn't get saved till I was in my early 20s, got born again at Camp Chevy, Mississippi. You ever heard that, Elise? And uh, God changed my life. I was in the National Guard summer camp. On Saturday night, God saved me. So, God may not be on our schedule, but he's always on time. So, Elisha knew that God would deliver him when he needed him because. We're going to look at seven things today. Number one, he had a history to draw from. Now, the reason some folks kind of fizzle out when it gets tough, because they don't have any history. But if you've got some history to draw from, you see, he was over plowing the oxen when Elijah came by and said, come on, boy. I'm country, so you'll have to just dig in with me. He said, come on. And he said, let me go first. Tell my folks. He said, forget it. Started it on off. And Elijah said, just let me kill one of these oxen and we'll make a sacrifice and burn the bridges. You see, if you burn the bridges, you can't go back. But so many people get in church, and they're thinking if things don't go to suit them, they'll go back where they was. But when the disciples, the crowds, had eaten the bread and fish, by the way, if you have bread and fish, people will come, and they were going to, the crowd left, and Jesus turned to Peter said, will y'all also go? And he said, go where? Where shall we go? Who shall we turn to? You have the words of eternal life. So if you don't have a history to draw from, make you some history. Because, folks, if you don't know it, things are going to get worse. The United States of America, I'm not a prophet or son of a prophet, a gatherer of sycamore fruits or a herdsman like Amos, but I've been around long enough to tell you, some of you older heads, you've seen the best that America will ever see. Now, if you notice that China and Russia 
are teaming up, coming together, getting ready for that big bear to march out of the north. And you see Iran is beefing up their resources, getting ready to come from the south. Look up because your redemption draws nigh. He had seen Elijah work back in 1 Kings, and he said, I've got the mantle from Elijah, and if it worked for him, it'll work for me. I'm thankful, I'm thrilled to death to see these young folks back here. Most of the church, most of the time in our church, if one family don't show up, there's one little boy there. I thank God for the young folks. But let's look and get through this in as quick as we can. And number two, he had a mentor to imitate. Fellas, you need to pick you out a young man. You ladies need to pick you out a young lady and become a mentor to them where they can have somebody to look up to and look on when things get tough. He had a mentor to imitate. He'd seen God work through Elijah during his ministry and do all these things and call fire down from heaven and all that he had seen. And he said, bless God, God's no respect to a person, is he? So if he can do it for him, and I've already asked him, give me a double portion of the spirit that rests on Elijah. Now, folks, in the Baptist church, and I've been a Baptist well over 50 years, when I wasn't a Baptist, I wasn't anything but a lost boy. But we as Baptists, we have gotten, been told by those that are in left field and the wrong place that we better stay away from following the Holy Spirit of God. You see, God's not the author of confusion. So you're not going to go wrong by doing thus saith the Lord. So he had a preacher daddy to imitate. In September, Lord willing, we'll, Polly and I, by the way, Polly and I will have our first year's anniversary next Thursday. Is that right? So we're newlyweds. And if we're sweet on one another, you just, it's just all right. We're dearly wed. <laughs> oh, but anyway, uh, don't be afraid to stop, follow the Spirit of God. He had a mentor, mentor to look up to. Now, grown men, listen to me. If you're not living right, don't you pull one of these young ones under your arm. You get your heart right with the Lord and you start doing right. You see, in this day that we live, it's still all right to do right. And the Word of God is still the inspired, in there, Word of God without any mixture of error. It's not inspired in spots and I'm called to spot to spots. But that's for another time. Number three, he had a passion to stir it. If you want to make me sick, I'm supposed to be nice, right, Polly? But if a preacher don't have it in his bones, and if he don't have the passion like the young man said that your pastor has, I would give you the flip of my finger from him. Now, he don't have to run and jump like me, but he needs to have the fire of God in him. He had a passion to stir it. He went back and took old Elisha's mantle and whopped that water with it. So I got a doctor. I can talk any way I want to. <laughs> he whopped that water with it and it spread back just like it did with his master. And when he walked across the water on the other side, those prophets, sons of the prophets, those the little preacher boys, looked and said, he's got it. And folks, if you don't have it, don't try to peddle it. Amen. He said he's just like his preacher daddy. Amen. A passion to stir him. 
when you sang, My Chains Are Gone, I preached about almost two years at the Tuscumbia City Jail, and that was our theme song. And folks, if you think you call to preach, you go to the jail, and if you preach at the jail, amen. amen. Saw many born again. And somebody said, well, preacher, that's just jailhouse religion. Could I tell you that at Faith Baptist, I baptized just a tad less than 300? And some of them didn't make it. So let me get back to the message. Aren't you proud you're born again? Amen. When's the last time you told somebody about it? When's the last time, bless God, you shared your testimony with somebody where they could hear from your own mouth what happened to you. Number four, he had a promise to cling to. Now, I try to be 100%, but I'm not. Polly will tell you that. I'm a, if when you get near to 100, you start forgetting a few things here. But I can still remember most more than you can, so don't worry about it. <laughs> had a promise to cling to. Elijah said, Son, you've asked a hard thing. Now most Christians I know would tuck their tail between their legs and call it quits to go home. Somebody gets sits in their pew or gets on their little sacred cow, they'll tuck it in and go to the house. I dare say that I don't know the history of this church, but if everybody was here this morning that has left and gone somewhere or gone home, it'd be an SOS Sunday. You remember what that is, Elise? Scoot over song. <laughs> it had a promise to cling to. Jesus said in John 10, 28, I shall give unto them, that's the ones that are born again, eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. That's security, ladies and gentlemen. You can depend on it. But if that weren't enough, in 29, he said, My father that gave them to me is greater than all, and nobody can snatch him out of his hand. And if that wasn't enough, Paul said we're sealed by the Holy Spirit under the day of redemption. If you're born again today, you're a two-fisted Christian. And I don't have another hand, but we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. He had a promise to cling to. One of my scriptures that I read daily says, Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens. When your pastor says God has told him to lead you in a direction, don't you question it. God's got the cattle of a thousand hills. The old preacher said the tater's under the hill. He can do it. If you got a promise, if you got a promise when all hell breaks loose on your life as it did Job, that you can say the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord. Do you have that? If you don't, you need it. A promise. All the promises the New Testament said in Christ are yes and amen. They're positive. Do you believe that? If you do... When it gets rough, I've heard COVID so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sick of COVID. <laughs> I've had it twice. I've had all the, the uh, shots, even had the infusion. <coughs> so I've been there. <coughs> Excuse me, I've had a, a sinus condition. But I've got three more to go, so you're going to just bear with me. All right, number four, he had a promise to cling to. Number five, 
He had God's presence to count on. The psalmist said, where can I go to be out of his presence? It will help you to live right if you care about that sort of thing to know that God's with you wherever you go. And you can't get out of his presence. I'll try to my best be nice. I started to say, even if you go out of town on vacation, God's still with you. <laughs> you know, a lot of folks say, <laughs> cross the state line, let, let it go. But he had God's presence. Yea, though, walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil because God is with me. You see, I believe that if we will live right, ladies and gentlemen, we can die right. Do you believe that? But if you've got a shaky salvation experience, and you live like hell itself, you'll have trouble dying. Aren't you proud you're saved? See, you may not hear that for a while. A lot, of, a lot of preachers don't talk about getting saved, getting born again. But I love it because I live without it. Many as a night, I looked at the ceiling. And we were good folks. Daddy didn't put up with no nonsense. And if Daddy said shut the door, you didn't say which one you shut them all. Just make sure you got it. See, I wasn't as bad as somebody else. But the problem was, the tragedy was, I lived within rock throwing distance of three Southern Baptist churches and no man cared for my soul. Number six. He had God's power to demonstrate. Now you don't, again, you don't have to holler like me. I told you I didn't need the microphone. <laughs> You don't have to walk around like me. But if you've got the power of the Holy Spirit residing within us, Jesus said it's needful, it's necessary that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit won't come. But since I have gone away and I have prayed to the Father and he sent another one, Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you the Holy Spirit's not a hickey? Not a thing? Not something you drum up? He is the third person of Godhead. Just as real and just as necessary as Jesus is. And Jesus said, if I go away, he will lead you. No more of this, I don't know how to live stuff. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. And all truth. And truth is contained right here. Somebody brings you anything, any doctrine, other than what's found in these pages, you don't listen to. And the Bible says, man that's born of woman is few days a lot of problems. So when problems come at your house, just leave the welcome mat out. Because it's common, the scripture says to me. Are you born again? When I start talking about these attributes of God, do you relate to it? Or do you say, I don't know what he's talking about? Again, if you don't know the Lord, I know where you're at. I told you three Southern Baptist churches were near us. I was pastoring a church right out of Hiawassee, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, first time I went to Bible school. And I taught the young teenagers class the first time I was in vacation Bible school. 
So he had the power of God to demonstrate. Now, Polly and I have a habit. If they say if you do something 28 days, it becomes a habit. We go out to eat a lot because it's just two of us. But I ask that waiter or waitress, could I ask you a question? Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yesterday, this sweet woman took me to Outback. And I asked the young man, I said, we're going to be praying over our meal. Is there anything that we could add to our prayer? He had that deer in the headlights look. You know, they're not used to that. He said, yes. He said, Pray for my mental health. Folks, we live in a mixed up, crazy world where there's so much junk out there that people that are not involved in the church don't know anything. And don't you assume, folks, that people, when you start talking about being saved, they know what you're talking about. But we need to be a witness. But if you hadn't seen anything, if you hadn't participated in anything, you got nothing to witness about. You would be amazed if you just share with people what they'll share with you. God's power to demonstrate. I guess I'm about out of time, but I've got one more. They had a God who always delivers. Nothing can happen to you if you're in the will of God that's not in his will. For we know that all things work together to those that love the Lord. Don't stop there. Those are called according to his purpose. See, a lot of folks praying, and they don't have anybody to pray to. And don't you suggest to anybody that's lost that they pray. I've heard people say, I pray every night. If you're lost, you have nothing to pray to. But then I... The only prayer that you can pray is, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And I will not as long as I keep my mind, congratulate some lost person that says they pray every day because I'm giving them false hope. God that always delivers. And don't be afraid to challenge the situation. If God's in it, he can handle it. How many years ago, Lisa? You, thirty-four. About f close to forty years ago, my wife that's deceased. God told us to go to South Georgia. I'll jump back over here. <laughs> I didn't know that was there. We didn't know anybody in South Georgia. Didn't have a job. Didn't have a place to stay. But God provided. And he blessed. And he's still blessing me in South Georgia for obedience. Don't be afraid to challenge the situation. And take positive action. If you want to really spoil my day, when God gives me something and I'm excited about it, pop up when the well, preacher, I sure hope so. I hope so. No. God's promises are yes and amen. And the battle and the results belong to the Lord. If God could send a little old ruddy-faced shepherd boy 
up against a giant twice as big as him, he can take care of you. And if God can move the Israelites through the badlands to the promised land, he can move Bethel Baptist Church wherever he directs. Amen? And it's exciting to walk with the Lord. Now, I have, you can tell I'm not young anymore. I have retired and done six, done ten interims and pastored again and now pastoring again and traveled over eight states. God can do it. Let me ask you in closing, do you know Jesus? Not about how long you've been in church. Not about how your uncle or grandpa was a preacher. Do you know Jesus personally? You see, I ask people, do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior? A lot of people want a Savior, they don't want a Lord. That means boss. So, how did he make it? He had a history to draw from. You got any history? If you don't, you need to be building. You young folks, and you older fellas and ladies, pick you out one of these kids and mentor them. I did an interim at New Hope, not too far from here. Young fellow aspired to preach. He couldn't do, do nothing. I let him make the announcements. I let him preach on Sunday night. I encouraged him. The first Sunday night in June, I'll be in Converse, Lord willing, I'll be in Converse, Louisiana, preaching for him. Amen. Amen. Had a mentor to imitate. He had a passion to stir him. Now you talk about fishing. That's great if you'll be that excited about fishing for men. <laughs> he had a promise to cling to. He had God's presence to count on. He had God's power to demonstrate. And he had a God who always delivers. Come with a verse of a song or whatever you do for the invitation. And I'm going to ask you, number one, if you don't know Jesus, I know exactly where you're at. Look at the old ceiling many a night and you if I was lost, if I died, I'd go to hell. All right, today's your day. If you need if Jesus in your heart. Yeah, let's stand. Let's stand. At the cross. Oh, right, right.